Hello everybody and welcome to this video. If you're not subscribed already, please make sure to do so. It really just help me out and you get to see more of this Rover stuff. Um, so in this video, we have um, something very, very impactful that I am about to do. I'm going to declare independence from all garages because I am going to try to fit this beast. So as you guys know, they're over there. Had a bit of a boo-boo. I'm going to try salvage the sat-nav um, sat footage because that would be so friggin' funny to listen back to that. It looks to me like we may be missing a clip, but I'll show you the, the only one, the nice whistling, the only one I've got. <laughs> that didn't sound very good. But when you put it in reverse, it sounded fine. So weird, but that's the bit that I broke down on there. This is just the other guy testing it in his car. And obviously there's me there looking mortified. Obviously I'm a bit annoyed because the guy from the AA said that it was absolutely dead. So that's really irritating. So without further ado, we're going to attempt. There's going to be an attempt today. I mean, look at this monster in here. Get it out for you. Um, a bit. Well, there you go. That's the best you're going to get for now but it is an absolute beast. So if you guys aren't already aware, a common issue on these 75 diesels is um, this part and this part are separate. They have like a rubber um, bearing dampener in the middle. And what usually happens with the poor quality parts is this all perishes, that's obviously spinning, that can't take the force of the spinning. Um, obviously you've got the resistance of the belts and the auxiliaries there, the ancillaries there. That can't take any more. That can't um, transfer the power through that to this. This rotates in and on itself. This spins, um, this all disintegrates and that spins off. And then you end up with this, a car that's been sat for a month. So I am going to now attempt, there will be an attempt, successful or not, to replace this because it's gonna cost me loads of money to replace it, if not. And I'd rather try it myself. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so the best way to get to it is this side. You can see, obviously, I've taken, I've loosened those out, taken the locking wheel, and I'll ideally just leave that in. Um, but yeah, we'll jack her up. And then we've got wheel chocks on the back, just in case. And this is the access you need to the um, the pulley there. You'd obviously get in there. You can see, obviously, my plenums are draining. They were draining anyway. I've just managed to shake some water out of them, which is good. I've got my little plenum stick here as well, which is super cool, so. We'll take this off. Of course, as you can see under here is our culprit. So mine, of course, has completely discombobulated itself. Um, so I believe the last garage didn't put it on as good as it should have. So I'm hoping that I can just take it off. But look at these brakes. My gosh, they're nice. Just can't wait to get a driving again. I mean, obviously stuck in the MVP, the 500, but you know, it's better than them. Um, Better not get where you need to be, I guess. But yeah, we'll um, we'll remove this, and then we'll um, we'll go from there. It's just this little access hatch, I believe, and then we should be able to just get into it. Cool trick with these things: since the plastic, get that behind it. If you if your screw head's gone, and then just once you've got a bit of thingy, twist it, and then this should just come out. It's probably the first best close-up that we're gonna have before we take it out, but look at how bad that did, that flew off. My hope is that my belts are okay, so I can just whack it, whack it all back together, and it'll be fine. But yeah, obviously, that ain't good. You can see how perished all of that is in there. That's a proper failure, that. I'm gonna have to heat this up now to try and get that off. We have acquired new technology known as this, the Go system. Um, unsuccessful on this, but I'm hoping it's successful on that. Usually, it pretty much is. Everything's successful on a Rover. And um, well, everything um, to do with taking stuff to pieces anyway. So let's get heating it up. Apparently you need to do both sides. I'm looking at TD4, um, whatchamacallit of it. So yeah, let's get that, get that done. Yes, my son, we've got it off. Yes, we're out. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Blue me, no me. We've got her out. How pleasing is that? Right. So you shouldn't do this, but ouch. I would recommend you do it. I'm literally shaking. I'm so pleased with myself. So what I did is I wedged this sucker up against here. Um, not up against there, sorry. I'll show you. I basically wedged it like that, obviously past this. 
So let's try show you like that with that 23 mil on it, 22, sorry. Cranked her over, took her off. However, I'm a bit worried about all that. I don't know what that is. I think it's anti-seize. But yeah, she's off. Thank God for that. So I'm gonna exfiltrate these belts, which don't look too horrifying to be quite frank with you. So I'm gonna get these suckers out. I can sit there and put the other one in. So if that, if this, the crank had gone, by the way, I'd be able to move that, but I can't, so that's good. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm literally dying. But look at how bad that is. Let's just, let's take a moment to appreciate. It, all it took was innovation. This is like the F117 Nighthawk of, um, of innovation that I just pulled on you all there. You know, you, there's things that you see to believe the fall of the Berlin Wall and Tom getting his crank pulley off of his Rover 75. That, my friends, is the progress, the march of man, the march of society moving forward. Just absolutely brilliant moment, but this is not brilliant because that looks terrible. So, obviously, that's obviously spanning there. Wah, 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 and then she's gone. So, we need to get the other one. And someone asked me, who made this thing? Um... I don't know who that is. Let me just look at my finger. I'm trying to see if we can figure out who she is. I'll find out and I'll let you know. But we have the cortico to go on. Yay. And look at how much better that is compared to this. So let's see. Obviously now that the, the thing is removed, you can hear the Rover 75 just chilling as she should be. Running like that, that's exactly how she usually runs. Give her a few licks. There you go. No crank failure. F you, dude. Uh, friggin' hell, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm angry and I'm... Um, I thought I'd actually snapped something when I took it off. Jesus Christ. Oh, my word. Finally off, yes. Now let's get the cortico on, which is going to be pretty epic because then this will have, like, all the bestest bits in it. I know you shouldn't really do that, but I kind of want to just see what it sounds like and make sure it actually sounds decent. It does sound okay. That does look like it's running normally, from what I know anyway. So I think that's a good one. So now we have to do sort the belts out. Get that in there. Is alright? No. <laughs> Need a bit more tension on that. <laughs> right, let's get more tension on it. So that's more than enough tension on that. I essentially wedged this bar underneath it and pushed it up and that's obviously giving it enough tension. Now you may notice my belts aren't looking too great. I know that one isn't, the other one's fine though. So I'm probably gonna have to um, replace that one ASAP. But for now, to get it running, I think we're, um, we'll be all right. So I've got to this point and that obviously is all going around wherever the hell it's supposed to go. I'll put a diagram on the screen. It's just there's a lack of tension here. Um, obviously I need to do the tension and everything, but I don't know, that just doesn't seem right. There's just too much going on. Obviously the aircon belt's fine. So you need to get a 23 mil in there on that. A little tensioner there, the automatic tensioner, and then sure to be able to, you know, sort that out. So now we've done that, we need to do the automatic tensioner, which is that one there. It's a 24 mil. So what you ideally need is a really long ring spanner. Now, I bought some blue spot ones from um, Amazon, but they don't fit, so sort those things. Try, um, I'm gonna try something else instead, which is from Life's Projects, where you put two spanners together. So I'm gonna give that a shot. So I've actually got a ring spanner now that'll fit, or well, a ring end that'll fit, and we'll see if we can do it. So there we go lads that's all done so bit i had a lot of trouble with was that tensioner you're probably going to want to get like a giant spanner in there i used those other ones but i ended up borrowing some from a neighbor and using those so thank god for that but yeah my top tips for this is probably um take your time don't do it when it's wet 
the pulley thing, the little trick I showed you at your own risk. The the belts and everything, of course, that it's that automatic tension arts a bit of a bit of a bitch. But yeah, this is quite nice to see her running. So I'm gonna just let, let her purr for a bit. Does that sound normal to you? To me, it sounds normal. Is that vibrating? I don't know. I'm a bit dubious because I did it, but yeah, it sounds all right. I've had someone look at it as well. That light also mysteriously broke. So yeah, we'll let it let her sit and do her thing, and then we'll then we'll go from there. But brilliant result. Sorry I didn't film the bit of the stupid automatic tensioner, but it was a friggin' nightmare. Hello everybody, and that is the end of the video. Remember, good things always... Well, what was the, what was the rhyme I randomly came up with? Good things always happen on a lane with cock in the name. And she's back, triumphant at last. The Rover 35, what a beast. I am so glad that we managed to get this working. Again, the guy that said that the crank was gone, talking out his ass, but you know, it is what it is. He could only do what he could do with the limited, you know, thing in my bobby had. And when obviously, you know, the saga progressed as we got through it and we all stuck together, we managed to um, get her back on the road again. And I am absolutely so pleased sounds all right actually to be fair for, for something i've done so again guys this of course serves as a bit of a rough guide on how to do it there's some great guides on the rover 75 and zt club forum i'll drop that link below but for for one of the best comebacks of the inner generation thank you for watching this is very dramatic isn't it dude fits the pulley to his car and he's giving like an inspirational speech but she's back i'm so excited and so happy so thank you for watching keep watching remember to subscribe for more of this well less of this but more triumphs thank you and i'll see you soon